Let's talk about the signum function. The signum function is another way of describing the sine function. That's really what it means. And you could describe it using a piecewise function. And here it is. The signum function can have three values, negative 1, 0, and 1. Now, when x is less than 0, the signum function will have a y value of negative 1. When x is equal to 0, the signum function will be equal to 0. And when x is positive, or when it's greater than 0, the signum function will be equal to 1. The signum function has a domain of all real numbers. x can be anything. But for the range, the range only has specific values negative 1, 0, and 1. It can't be anything else but those three values. So let's draw a rough sketch of the signum function. So the most important values are 1 and negative 1 on the y-axis. Now when x is 0, y is going to be 0. So we're going to have a point at the origin. And when x is greater than 0, or when x is positive, y is going to be 1. So we're going to have an open circle, and it's going to go towards the right. When x is less than 0, or when x is negative, that is on the left side of the, the graph, y is going to be negative 1. So that's the graph of the signum function. If you notice, it's very similar to this function. The absolute value of x divided by x. In fact, the signum function is equal to this function, and it's also equal to the reciprocal of that function. The only difference is x can't be 0. Because if we have a 0 in the bottom of a fraction, then that fraction will be undefined. But for everywhere else, the signum function is equal to the absolute value of x divided by x, or x divided by the absolute value of x. Because these two functions, they will give you one of two values, either 1 or negative 1. But you won't be able to get 0 because it will be undefined if you have a 0 in the denominator of a fraction. Now, the signum function is the derivative of the absolute value function when x is anything but 0. So let's say we have the graph of f of x, which is, let's say it's the absolute value of x. The absolute value of x has a v shape. It looks like that. Now, if we want to find the derivative of that function, it will give us the signum function as long as x doesn't equal 0. So in order to find the derivative of the right side of the absolute value of x, we can look at the slope. Notice the slope is positive 1. And also, you can express the absolute value function as a piecewise function. So the absolute value of x is equal to negative x when x is less than 0, and it's equal to positive x when x is greater than 0. And it's equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. I forgot an x here. So if you were to take the derivative of the right side, or of positive x, you're going to get just 1. And if you were to take the derivative of negative x, which is the left side of the graph, you're going to get negative 1. And that's the slope of this line. So on the right side, 
if we have a slope of 1 for the derivative function, that is going to correlate to a y value of 1. For the left side, we have a slope of negative 1. So that's going to correlate to a y value of negative 1 in the derivative function. And as you can see, we get the sine m function. The only difference is x can't be 0. Because if you try to find the derivative at this point, notice that it's the absolute value function. It's continuous at x equals 0, but it's not differentiable. The slope changes instantaneously from negative 1 to 1. It's not a smooth transition. So it's not differentiable at x equals 0. But for all other points, the sine m function is the derivative of the, of the absolute value function. Now, something else that you want to know regarding the sine m function is that any real number can be expressed as the product of its absolute value and its sine m function. So some real number x, you can write that as the absolute value of x times the sign m function of x. So let's say if we want to represent 9, the absolute value of 9 times the sign m function of 9 that's going to give us 9. The absolute value of 9 is 9 and I forgot to plug in a 9 here The sign m function of 9 is going to be positive 1 because when x is greater than 0, the sign m function will return a value of positive 1. And 9 times positive 1 is 9. So let's say if we want to represent a negative number, like negative 7. So we can represent negative 7 as the absolute value of negative 7 times the sign m function of negative 7. So the absolute value of negative 7 is positive 7. And the sign m function of negative 7, that's negative 1. Because when x is less than 0 or negative, the sign m function will return a value of negative 1. And this will give us negative 7. The other real number that we could try is 0. So if we have the absolute value of 0 times the sign m function of 0, this is going to be 0. And if you plug in 0 into the sign m function, you're going to get 0. 0 times 0 will equal 0. Now, this is not going to work if you have an imaginary number. This only works for all real numbers. So imaginary numbers won't work here. So that's it for this video. Hopefully, it gave you a good introduction into the sign m function and how it works, its graph, its domain and range and how you can express any real number using that function.